Hey, this is Terry B. from PinballRehab.com and today we're going to talk about basic soldering. This video is intended to specifically give you the skills and tools that you need to solder under playfield components. After completing this tutorial, you'll be able to properly solder broken wires, switches, solenoids, and diodes. This is my dad's 25 watt Weller soldering iron, which is probably older than me. My favorite part about it is that the power cord is actually rusted. Not sure how that happens. And as you can see, the tip is pretty well shot on this one. So what we're gonna do is use a more modern solution. This is a 25 watt professional from Weller. You can buy it for about $35. Hacko also sells a 25 watt model, although it comes with a conical tip, which we'll talk about in a minute. In addition, you're going to need a stand for your iron and then something to clean the tip with. The old standby is a sponge soaked in water, or the newer solution is copper wire in a bundle, which you can clean by just poking the tip into the wire. The tip is as important as the iron. This is an ST3 tip, which is 0.125 inches wide and comes with the Weller WP25. Our next tip is an ST4, which is 0.187 inches wide. Either one works fine for underplay field work. Unfortunately, a lot of soldering irons come with conical shaped tips and they're completely worthless. Next, we need a couple of things for cleaning the solder joints. First is a fiberglass pen, which you can pick up at Radio Shack, and then also some chemical cleaner or flux. In this case, it's the MG Chemicals brand. I'm using MG Chemicals 6040 rosin core solder and a .40 diameter. Anything between a 0.4 and a 0.6 is acceptable for doing under play field work. Before soldering, you should always tin and clean the tip. Also note that since 6040 solder melts at about 370 degrees, the fact that your soldering iron will melt the solder does not mean it's hot enough yet. The Weller has a tip temperature of about 750 degrees, so you need to let it set or preheat for at least 10 to 15 minutes. If the items that you'll be soldering, the lug, the wire, or the diode, don't have a nice shiny surface, the first step is to clean them with our fiberglass pen. It's important to have a good physical connection before soldering. So first twist the wire, insert it into the lug, and then using your fingers bend it into a J shape, and then clamp it down onto the lug. At this point you can add some solder flux if you want to. It's really not necessary when you're doing soldering as compared to desoldering. But when you're learning, it will help a little bit with the process. Position your soldering iron so that you have maximum surface contact between the tip and the lug and the wire. Wait two to three seconds and then apply solder to the point where the tip touches the wire. When the solder begins to melt and form a solder bridge, Move the wire away from the tip to the opposite side of the wire. Continue to slowly feed solder until it begins to flow across the solder joint. And then continue for another second or two until you've got good coverage and you're done. Always let the solder completely cool before continuing.
Inspect the back side of your solder joint. If there's not enough solder, reheat the joint and add a little more. Just for grins, we'll add a little bit more solder to this joint. A good solder joint is smooth, shiny, has no pits, scratches, or jagged edges. Always clean the area afterwards with a good flux remover. While in most cases you'll have enough room in the lug to put both the wire and the diode in place, you'll come across some small holes and the best thing to do is to take the diode lead, use your solder pick to twist it into a J shape, put it on the lug and wrap it around one full revolution, clamp it down with a pair of needle nose and then you can solder it to the lug instead of soldering it through the hole. One area people often have trouble with is soldering the wire back onto the lead from pop bumper bulbs. Normally I don't tin wires, but in this case it does help. So tape down the lead and your wire with some blue painter's tape and be prepared with something to hold down the wire once you're done soldering if it tries to lift up a little bit. Heat the joint, apply some solder, and you're done. For more information, go to pinballrehab.com and put soldering in the search box.